48. Welcome back to VT. A, a big weekend when we talk about politics here in our province. We have a new leader of our BC Liberal Party. His name is Andrew Wilkinson. Congratulations Thank on you. winning the vote Saturday evening. Thanks, yeah. uh, you said this in your acceptance speech. Six months, six candidates, five rounds of voting. This came down, and in the fifth vote, 53% uh, of it went your way. Uh, are you surprised at how close this vote was after all was said and done? Well, it was an interesting race in the final vote because, as we know, I was in third place through the first four ballots and then came through in first place. And so I think what that reflects is that people had second and third choices on the ballots and they decided I was a pretty safe bet. They formed an allegiance for their first choice and as their first choice fell off the ballot, I got promoted in their choices and I'm just very grateful to the membership for having that confidence in me. Well, 60,000 party members are voting online, calling in by phone and it was close in the end, uh, edging out Diane Watson and when you were on stage and had your fellow MLAs joining you, uh, we saw a moment where you reach out to Diane Watts, and uh, I think the question is, when you come down to it this close, and for people in BC looking for uh, an appetite for change to revamp the Liberal Party, what role do you see Diane Watts playing now in the Liberal Party? Because she tweeted out Saturday night saying that she's committed to the party and wants to create change. That's great, and you know, Diane was very gracious to come on the stage with the elected MLAs afterwards and to uh, stand with me, and we all had a big smile on our face. So I think a very bright future for the party with Diane Watts engaged in the party. It'd be great to have her fully engaged, and I intend to pursue that. Do you have an idea for a specific role that Diane would fit as you move forward now? Well, she and I will talk about that because obviously she's in the driver's seat in that regard. She has her own life decisions to make. And if there's an opportunity to have her run for office, I would welcome that as part of our party. Well, when we look at uh, top issues, and uh, first day back at legislature will be next Tuesday, uh, one of the big issues we talk about on the show, housing affordability. Affordability. Absolutely. How will we tackle that with the new uh, revamp with the Liberal Party, uh, given what has happened over the past few years? Well, in the platform document I put out, I put right in here that we need to make sure that the right tax incentives for people to build rental housing. We've all been through rental housing at some point in life, and many people stay in rental housing for their entire lives. And we have to make sure there's a sufficient supply of rental housing, because that means the price will be affordable. We've also talked about, and all the candidates talked about it, the need to make sure that the permitting process gets speeded up because in my own neighborhood there are places that have been in the permit process for three to five years and nobody can wait around for five years to see if their project's going to go ahead and if we can provide housing in that community we need to get on with it is the basic point. What about banning foreign real estate purchases? We've heard Andrew Weaver speak up about the issue New Zealand even incorporating this idea as of January 1st uh, NDP leader and our Premier John Horgan uh, not necessarily a huge fan of the idea if you were Premier would you incorporate the idea of a foreign uh, a ban on foreign real estate purchase? You know, I came to this country as an immigrant at age four. We weren't citizens or even permanent residents for a while. We had to wait for the papers to come through. And so you don't want to send the signal to newcomers to Canada they're not welcome. At the same time, we know that there's a, a, an element in our society who are speculating on houses, and that's not good for us, the people who actually live here. So you've got to find that fine balance. And some kind of broad brush ban on foreign ownership is a way to drive out people like my family and say you're not wanted here. And that's not the Canadian way. That's certainly not the British Columbian way. Well, you're speaking out to diversity in this province and uh, the oldest candidate out of the six now taking over for the Liberal Party. How does this Liberal Party reach out to the young voters, to the diverse voters, given what happened in the previous election? Well, we've been kind of tarred and feathered in social media as the downtown party that doesn't care. We have to reverse that sentiment, obviously, because we are a party that's had an excellent track record of looking after the interests of British Columbians. And my own view is that we need to be out there with an environmental message that has more resonance with young people. I've talked throughout this campaign about how we're very proud of this landscape. All British Columbians think it's a great place to live because of the natural landscape. Part of that is wildlife management. So we need to put a whole new emphasis on wildlife management, do it scientifically, get more understanding of our wildlife inventories and populations, and get out there and take care of them. And that's going to be something I think will really resonate with young people. It certainly does with my family. Well, looking at the wildlife and environment, a uh, hot debate over the battle with bitumen with BC and Alberta. If the Liberals come back into a majority rule, uh, Trans Mountain Pipeline, would you support the idea of pushing that forward given the environmental risk? 
You know, the issue has become a bit of a silly game between the NDP government of John Horgan and the rest of the country. They've picked a fight with Alberta. They've picked a fight with the federal government. We've got to remember that the jurisdiction in Canada over interprovincial pipelines is federal, just like it is for aviation or telecommunications. And the province has a very limited role. And yet John Horgan has decided that he's going to take over the world and pick a fight with Alberta and, and Canada. They'll probably lose in the courts, and all they will have done is antagonize the neighbors and get to the same result. But this the support from the environment is big. Is this a position where you would say we want to push forward and it is good for the province? Sure, there's economic benefit, but given the environmental risk, is this the best move for the province? We've been actually very successful in protecting the marine environment under Christy Clark. We uh, convinced the federal government to put one and a half billion dollars into marine spill prevention and protection. That's all new because we didn't have any marine spill protection before and we've, for 45 years we've had oil tankers going through the Strait of Juan de Fuca straight past the legislature in Victoria with no spill protection on the Canadian side. Now we're getting it because of what Christy Clark did to get the uh, benefits out of the federal government when they make a decision about the Kinder Morgan pipeline. Well, uh, changes here with the Liberal side of things and the first day back at legislature next Tuesday should be interesting to see question period. Andrew, I appreciate you Thank coming you. on. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Taking and the questions. I'm sure there'll be uh, many more uh, conversations being had in the near future. We'll take a break.